Do not, my friends, become addicted to water. It will take hold of you, and you will resent its absence. There should be a science of discontent. People need hard times to develop psychic muscles. In our time on this channel, we have talked about the universes of Conan the Barbarian, which fathered the sword and sorcery genre, the Barsoom series, which featured the fully psychic inhabitants of a dying Mars, and other works which fall within the weird fiction category of storytelling. In these universes, there is a core message of infinite present danger only being overcome by our own willpower and strength of character. In the works of Edgar Rice Burroughs, we see the importance of the gentleman warrior in a world of savagery, as his chief characters, whether they be John Carter or Tarzan, face down brutal beasts of wicked intent, their empathetic humanity spurring them on to fight these deranged monstrosities. I understand you belittle all sentiments of generosity and kindness, but I do not, and I can convince your most doughty warrior that these characteristics are not incompatible with an ability to fight. Robert E. Howard gives us an opposite, but still very complimentary message of the importance of staying true to the primal morality of the heart in a world of over-civilized corruption. This is shown through his two great barbarians, Cull and Conan, who both became great kings where once only decadences and moral notions ruled. Warrior kings who provide for their people, overthrow selfish fools who made a common habit out of cruelty towards the defenseless. Civilized men are more discourteous than savages, because they know they can be impolite without having their skulls split as a general thing. There is a setting where all these great messages are reinforced through an interactive atmosphere, while also being distantly part of the Dungeons & Dragons multiverse, giving us access to the largest treasure trove of lore we could have ever hoped for. The desert planet of Athos isn't dead, but it is dying. This is a world of sadistic slavery, parasitic sorcery, and men who become monsters where suffering is inevitable. This is Dark Sun, and you will be defined by how you respond to that suffering amidst tyranny and insanity. Will you be a hero or a villain? A preserver or a defiler? What will you do, adventurer? Grimdark. Half off! The multiverse of Dungeons & Dragons is easily one of the most common uses of the concept in fiction. It is comprised of all possible worlds, both official and homebrew in nature. This means that the world you have created to play with your friends is just as canon as Midgard or the Forgotten Realms. However, in this case, there exists a unique element called the Grey, also functioning as the afterlife of the setting, which makes it very hard for outsiders to reach the universe. Depending on your DM, this either makes Athos fully closed off to the multiverse, or just farther away. In this endless expanse of pure dreariness, only two fates await you in the land of the dead. The first is to be absorbed into its ashen wastes, as your soul decays just as your mortal body did. The second is your belief in a greater cause, turning you into a wraith, making you one of the undead who can freely pass from the grey into the material world, only needing to return to fuel yourself from its essence. Athasian wraiths are a silver mist in form outside of their chosen vessel, whether that be a corpse, animal, or an object. A corpse would be the most common, as they would chiefly possess something to communicate with the living. Human vocal cords are necessary for human speech. In the context of Dark Sun, these entities would function as a mixture between lethal foe and grimdark force ghost, so long as they can focus on a sentimental item from their life before death which acts as a magnet for their presence. Wraiths have the ability to create spectre servants from the souls of the violently killed and drain the life of others, which is very fitting for the vampiric nature of magic in the world. Necromancers are said to draw their power from this realm, just as Templars take their power from sorcerer kings who seek to become dragons. Other than these schools and shadow magic, which draws its power from a plane called the Black, most magic draws its energy from the very life force of the planet while also causing physical pain to those around them. This is because the Grey separates magic users from both the gods and other sources of power outside the universe, which would usually aid in the casting of spells, such as the Weave. The only inhabitants of the Black are known as Shadow Giants, named ironically, as they were once halflings in life before being trapped in the realm, from which they can only interact with the world through the areas where the sun's rays do not touch. This is the nature of non-existence, for they do not exist in the darkness, but rather in the absence of light. 
The only other plane talked about unique to the setting of Dark Sun is referred to as the Hollow, which exists beyond even the Black, in which Rajat, the first sorcerer, was imprisoned. We can think of this as a kind of super-nothingness, or the Black of the Black. It should be noted that Athos is not cut off to the elemental planes, which are said to increase in influence the further one travels from civilization. These forces, which are also called the inner planes, are respective dimensions of one pure element each. Fire, water, air, and earth have theirs, as well as para-elemental planes of extreme variety. Due to the chaos that has been wreaked throughout this world's long history that has turned it from a carbon copy of the usual fantasy setting into what we see today, these planes have a much stronger hold than average on the terminal realm. The most obvious visible feature of the daytime sky, after you make it past the gray other than the impossible heat, is that which generates it, the deathly crimson sun. Its corrupted brutal rays being a weapon in their own right that all must suffer the wrath of, unless hidden under shade. Its cracked appearance being an anxiety-inducing reminder of your possible fate should you not find any water, the precious few sources of which are primary tools of geopolitical power. Players in a Dark Sun campaign incorporate survival elements into their adventures to simulate this environment. At night, the moons are a far more forgiving sight. Should you find some way of reaching them, according to rumors, living there would be far superior to your current situation. The sages have said that the green moon of Rao has vast emerald oceans and dizzyingly tall island mountains, while the golden moon of Gathay is theorized to hold scarlet jungles as well as marshy seas. Of the three livable planets, Athos clearly suffered the worst fate. A brief look around the planet shows this to be very true. However, despite the malignant landscape, the world still teems with unique life. Chief among these interesting qualities is that all life on Athos, including yourself, possess some form of natural psychic abilities, referred to as psionics. Some are far more useful than others, and many stay dormant. But these quirks can be the difference between life and death in many cases. They aren't strong on average, taking many years to master or turn into something useful, but the possibility of a great monstrosity that has increased awareness of where its prey is needs to be considered before traveling onward. The regions of Athos are divided by the Great Sea of Silt, lava, mountains, and in some rare cases valleys of pure obsidian. While lava may be present, make no mistake, this is not the lava from some volcano, as Athos does not possess the oceans to make them. This lava was brought forth from the world's core due to its horrid state. The region you're in, and is most known to you, is that of Tyr, more specifically that of the Tablelands. Almost nothing but sand, mud, and wastes for tens of thousands of miles in any direction. Outside of the seven city-states, a quality life in Tyr is nearly impossible, while life inside them bears the dangers natural for any corrupt society. The city the region is named for was recently liberated from the wicked sorcerer King Kalak, but is a bloated bureaucracy of crime any less harmful to the people than a direct tyrant. If you truly hate tyranny, then perhaps the anarchic city of Rom, which is in a constant state of riot after the death of their own sorceress queen, might be a good option. A good deal as a merchant might be found in the wealthy marble city of Balak, or the city of lions, only known as Uruk. Uruk's deep wells and placement near the ringing mountains allow it to be rich in food, as well as, far more importantly, water. These are thoughts for another time, though. You only have a dagger for protection, which is made from the bones of a dead crudlu, as metal is very rare indeed. Even if you could afford a suit of metal armor, wearing such a thing would be a death sentence due to overheating. For now, you'll have to make do with your robe, face mask made from a rag, and large hood. To avoid the fate of slavery or death in any of your desired locations, you will need a practical service to offer, things to trade for ceramic pieces, and the ability to defend yourself. A nomadic seeker of knowledge, you march ever onward. Welcome to the Dark Sun lore series. This video was designed to be nothing more than a super brief introduction of the setting. There are many videos which can be done on this universe. Its unique take on dragons, elementals, and classical or new D&D races each deserve their own videos. 
For now, I will link to The Great Michael Snow's complete guide to the setting. This lore movie is around two and a half hours long and should give you a far more comprehensive introduction to the world, should you be interested. You can also find, in the source list below, my own Dark Sun Skyrim mod list video, in which I talk about my playthrough concept of using the lore of Athos with that of Elder Scrolls. Dark Sun was designed by Timothy B. Brown. It was brought to life through the naturalist art of Gerald Brom and the Prism Pentad book series by Troy Denning a reading of which can be found on the YouTube channel Black Rat Inn, which is linked below. The YouTube channel, Chris Moneymaker, is a great source for Dark Sun content as well. Finally, if you want a very professionally done adventure in this setting by players who work hard on their role-playing, you can check out Toby Osmond, Donathan Dreyer, and Mythmatic in Rise of the Veiled Alliance, found on the Looking for More channel. If you enjoyed this short introduction to the universe, return next time as we dive deeper into the world. I'm very excited to be learning about all of this with you. My special thanks to the recent donators, as there have been an influx of you since we've gained in popularity. I appreciate all of you and your brave soldiers in the war for grimdark content.